He reaches far beyond our state. His resume includes work with legends like John Mayall, Ringo Starr, and so many more. You can see him play tonight at Under the Volcano. Welcome back to Wide Open Spaces, David Grissom. How you doing this morning? I am doing very fine. Thank I guess you. it's afternoon right now. Well, it's morning for me. I drove in from Austin uh, after my gig last night, so it's it's all relative. Tell me a little bit about that. You do it. Uh, you just started kind of back up again, doing Tuesday nights over at uh, the Saxon. Is that right? Yeah, we do every Tuesday there now. It's, it's uh, no cover, and um, you, you know, every time I walk in there each week, I, I kind of expect it, nobody to be there after. You know, but we have this. We have a really good following that comes. Uh, a lot of people, the same people, come back, and it's really just a chance for us to. We just like playing so much, sure. and um, having done it a lot over the last year, we've really got the the band has really developed into its own entity, and we have a great rapport, and it's a chance to really stretch out. And if I go I go in there feeling, you know, not so great or in a down mood or whatever, I always leave feeling jazzed and sure. really up so it's really kind of our fix sure each week you got a good good group of guys yeah. you're playing with and as a matter of fact you were telling me off air that these guys are so good you're actually kind of worried about keeping them around well i'm keeping my fingers crossed and trying to enjoy every gig not get too far off in the future but you know inevitably you know somebody's gonna it's hard to keep a band together when you're doing you know uh, no cover tuesday shows even though we play for tips and people are really cool about sure. um, you know put money in the tip jar and we do well but um, you know, we're, we're starting to do more weekends and I mean I'd love to see the thing grow it's just uh, you know my, it, it's the economy with dignity mm -hmm. uh, it costs so much money to get out of town and go on the road um, just taking it one step at a time but we, are, we do have some cool stuff coming up and um, just let it develop naturally but yeah hopefully we'll keep the van, these guys together because it's they're, they're really special players sure now i know you played uh at under the volcano a few months ago and uh, you stopped by the kpft show uh wide open spaces before that and uh, you played to a packed house that night so folks who showed up there uh, a couple months ago are you playing with the exact same band the exact same there? band yeah nice. we'll probably play some different a few different tunes sure. uh more than a few probably which is what we try to do especially about you know playing every week in austin we try to vary the set list quite a bit so that people uh can be surprised and hear some different stuff so i hope i, I actually kept my set list from last time so we'll play some different things tonight too cool cool you uh you spent many years creating your first class guitar uh, for paul reed smith called the dgt mm -hmm. uh tell folks a little bit about this guitar and why it took 25 years to actually get it in production well i mean i've been playing their guitar since 1985 mm -hmm. i mean i was barely in, you know old enough to go on a bar when i started playing these things right. and uh they really appealed to me initially because in austin everybody when i got to austin I, the only guitar i owned was a fender stratocaster and everybody there seemed to be playing strats and even late at night one night after a party I had a guy who was sort of a fixture on the scene telling me that if you don't play a Strat, you ain't, mm -hmm. you know, I can't say it on the right. air. But, uh, and so the next morning I woke up and immediately decided I needed to get a different guitar. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so um, they had just come out. I, I got one, uh, found a dealer in Dallas that had one, fell in love with it, and met Paul Reed Smith shortly thereafter. And we just developed a rapport um, in 93, there was a guitar that I special ordered. It was actually made around 91. I special ordered this guitar with quite a few different features than anything they'd done. And I had to sort of, you know, really Coach them a little bit. push to get some of these things going. Uh, the artist relations person there at the time was really in my camp. And so cool. between her and myself, we were able to get it through. And it turned out to be, they actually took that guitar and made it into a, a model that they have called the McCarty model, which was one of their most successful guitars for years. And I would play this guitar. I played this guitar for, you know, 10, God, I don't know, 15 years. And along the way, I thought about all these improvements we could make to it. And um, originally, it was just going to be the McCarty too. And the more I thought about it, and the more we talked about it, that we were going to make even more changes, that it was so different that um, I didn't want my name on it. So I, I settled for my initials. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, I know I've. I, People are funny about, you know, they don't want to play a guitar that says Eric Clapton or Sheryl Crow on the <laughs> right. fingerboard, you know. Right. Um, so it's just got a little tress rod cover thing that says it has my initials on it, and you can take it off if you want. But um, it's really been, a, you know, a cool process. To, and so that it really was 25 years in the making to sure. get to that point. 
but it's um, the result of you know th literally thousands of gigs and recording sessions and it's safe to, I mean I feel that it's I can say that it's definitely been sure. tested yeah ro road tested and studio tested both it is uh, it's the not only amazing sounding guitar but it's beautiful as well and uh you can you can spend a pretty penny on them i think that uh they range from like two and a half to two thousand five hundred dollars and they go all the way up to maybe even like the worst case scenario on <laughs> on, on one of these things might be fifteen well, thousand dollars best case scenario for me <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah right um, tell folks how they could spend fifteen thousand dollars on a guitar well they do um paul reed smith their uh the regular production models are unbelievably right. great. I mean, the the fit and finish on them. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there too because I, I did Google some stuff and I, I looked on uh, on YouTube and there's so many people that have picked these things up mm -hmm. and it seems like they're just uh, on on the YouTube they're they're just getting familiar with the guitar. Yeah. It's like an, okay, let me pick this thing up, see what it does, and they're all just amazed at all the different tones and things. That this right. Can I do. Tr I mean. I tried to. I mean, my whole thing about guitars is I've, I love vintage guitars, and and um, I sort of think that this guitar is sort of the guitar, the PRS guitar for people that don't really like PRS guitars. Mm -hmm. It's definitely more vintage inspired, but I also um, worked incredibly hard. I spent a year working with um, Paul to develop the pickups and making the guitar so versatile that if you had to just take one guitar, you could cover every bass. Um, so. Uh, the fifteen thousand yes. dollar thing is uh, what 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 happens is is that they have a small division called private stock, mm -hmm. and it's you know there's like five to ten people that even work in that division, and they have these unbelievable woods that Paul has sort of collected over the years, and they do these limited runs, and the one that I, you were talking about there, they made fifteen of them. And the deal was on that was that it, there was no input from any dealers at all. It was Paul and myself that specced the guitar out. And I literally went in and picked every single top, every single neck. We tapped on the woods to hear the, the tone of the wood when you tapped on it. And um, so that was like, we're going to make 15 guitars that are exactly what we want to do and we hope you like them mm -hmm. but the woods in them are really are not even obtainable anymore so that's that you know it, i mean that's i don't have fifteen thousand dollars sure. to spend on a guitar but it, you know it's a it was a really fun opportunity for me to sure. do something like that that's great that's yeah. cool and uh you can take a picture uh, there's a lot of pictures online if you just look up uh, paul reed smith you can see uh all those guitars yeah. in there, and they're beautiful yeah. um you um, have been doing some stuff with uh, with um, Buddy Guy. And, yeah. and I know that you just recorded a Grammy-winning album with him, and that was Living Proof, and you did a lot of the guitar work on that. And uh, that, that's got to make you feel pretty proud. Yeah, I mean, it's been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I've, I, um, I've done four records with Buddy. I just finished the new one. But Living Proof, you know, it won the Grammy, and... Um, I played on the whole record, and you know, if it's not a guitar solo, it's me playing. Mm -hmm. And um, just to be the way that we Buddy makes records is, I think, is really brilliant, and that the the producer really deserves the credit for it. In that, when we cut the tracks, um, the producer gets somebody else to sing, and Buddy is playing guitar the whole time, so he really is feeding off the band for his guitar playing, mm -hmm. and um, then he goes back later and does his vocal um but to be playing rhythm guitar you know with, with for buddy guy is just it's phenomenal and the band is always smoking um this particular new one um i mean the guy's unbelievable he flew in we got to nashville on a monday and the sunday night before he did the kennedy center honors where he was honored with led zeppelin yep. and um, some other people but uh I mean, he flew in from Miami to do the Kennedy Center thing and then uh, flew back to Nashville, and he had been to India. We had to postpone the record one week because he went to India to do one gig. <laughs> and he's 76 now. Right. And uh, I don't know. I mean, God, we place. should be so lucky, you know, to to live that long and then to have anything resembling that energy. And every, t every take we did, yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, I don't know where it comes from, mm -hmm. but it's, it's incendiary. Yeah, you know, it's on fire. Yeah. Uh, and 
so yeah, that's. I mean, I would have to say that we're doing those records with Buddy is uh, in the top five. All right, thanks. Well, we're gonna play one off of Living Proof. As a matter of fact, we'll play the title track to Buddy Guy's uh, Grammy Award-winning album, Living Proof, and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more about uh, some other things cool. after this. And of course, David Grissom playing tonight at Under the Volcano with his full band. You guys hit the stage. Oh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. All right, there it is. Civilized. And we'll give out some tickets here in a little bit. But uh, here he is, we get helping out Mr. Buddy Guy on KPFT. <laughs> This one is, was particularly fun to cut because I'm playing by myself through the whole first verse, just me and he's, you know, singing. All right, we'll go into uh, Good Day for the Blues okay. next. Okay. 